Here's a traditional introduction for a speaker. Our next speaker is the 1999 world champion of public speaking. With more than 175,000 Toastmasters in 68 countries and over 25,000 contestants, he came home with a first prize trophy and a significant amount of national and international recognition. In addition, our speaker is absolutely oblivious to the fact that we could care less what he has done and that we are much more interested in what we will be able to do after hearing him. Moreover, our speaker seems to have no idea that we are simply hoping for his autobiographical introduction to end so we can start clapping as if we are interested. Finally, he doesn't realize we are beginning to say to ourselves, wow, his entire introduction is about him. Therefore, I bet his entire speech is about him also. Why did I even come here today? So with that said, please help me welcome the person who would have the least effective introduction in history were it not for the thousands of other presenters who have introductions just like his. Help me welcome the 1999 world champion of public speaking, Craig Valentine. Now, what's wrong with that introduction? I'm sure you get the point. But how similar is your introduction to that old one? Is it, is it about you or is it about your audience and what they'll get out of your speech? Everything you do should be about the audience, including your introduction. See, your introduction flavors your entire speech. You can either use it to get the audience fired up and excited about what they're going to hear, or you can use it to boost yourself up in their eyes. You can use it to whet their appetite with the, the valuable tools they're sure to get from your presentation, or, again, you can use it to boost yourself up in their eyes. Here's one thing I know for sure. Once I changed my introduction from me-focused to you-focused, I gave myself an extreme advantage before I even said one word, and the same thing will happen to you too. So here are five ways to fire up your audience with your introduction. Number one, start it off about them. Make your very first sentence about them. So instead of starting off with, our next speaker today is the 1999 world champion, start with something like this. There's a definite process for keeping your audience on the edge of their seats. It's not easy to come by. It's not easy to use. However, once you master it, you'll find doors opening for you that you never even knew existed. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but there were five you or your words used in those two sentences. So you got to make it you focused first. Start with them, not with yourself. So how many you-related words are in your introduction? Count them and make sure there are many more you-related words than there are I-related words. So number one is start it off about them. Number two, make a promise. Don't be bashful. Let them know exactly what they'll get, but also let them know what those tools will empower them to do and to receive. So in the example above, I tell them they'll get a process that empowers them to keep their audience on the edge of their seats and rewards them with more open doors and opportunities. That's a pretty compelling promise. So what compelling promise do you make with your introduction? Number two is to make a promise. Number three, you want to build your credibility, but only with your relevant credentials. For example, I have a specific introduction for my team building workshops, and this introduction includes a piece that mentions how I was part of a team that won three consecutive East Coast Conference championships, and I played in two NCAA March Madness tournaments as a college basketball player. Now, because this part of my history relates to teams, it belongs in the introduction on team building. However, <laughs> as proud as I am about those basketball accomplishments, do you think they belong in an introduction if the speech is about presentation skills? No. Look, if I was sitting in the audience and I heard the introducer say, our presentation coach today was also a college basketball player, I know I'd be thinking, well, while he was dribbling up and down the court, was he giving a speech? Because if not, why do I care? Only use relevant information no matter how well-rounded you are. Even if you're extremely proud of something, look, if it doesn't fit, don't force it. Leave it out. So is all the information in your introduction relevant to the subject at hand? That's what you want to ask yourself. Number four is use the introduction to set up something in your speech. 
For example, when I begin speaking, I often call back to my introduction by saying something like this. Do you know that even with all those accolades, people still don't like me? You know why they don't like me? And then I go into a humorous story about why they don't like me. But it's all set up by the accolades, the relevant ones, in my introduction. So find ways to make your introduction seamlessly feed into your speech. How do you currently do that? How do you currently tie your speech back into your introduction? And then number five, take everything about you and turn it into everything for them. Now, if you do this, your audience will be ready and excited to receive your message. For example, instead of stating Craig Valentine is the 1999 world champion of public speaking, I could make that actually matter to them by saying the process you pick up today helped our speaker become the 1999 world champion and you can use it to become a speaker in high demand. So you get it? Turn everything about you into everything for them. And doing this will get them fired up to hear your message. It tickles me today because now when the introducer gets to the end of my introduction, she usually says, are you ready for the process? And at that point, people actually begin to yell out, yes! Well, let me tell you, that's some great energy to walk into for a speech. So are you turning everything about you into everything for them. Follow those five guideposts and watch as your audience members lean forward in their seat and anxiously await your presentation. That's how you ignite your audience with your introduction. Until next week, keep speaking up.